Okay guys, 18.1. I'm gonna get straight into the strategy tips and also gonna talk about the best uh, warm-up protocol for the workout, cool-down protocol, uh, and what we're recommending for training to be done uh, after the workout itself as well. Uh, so getting into the pacing of this workout, first of all. So 20-minute AMRAP, it's very important that the, uh, the, the pace of each round is quite similar from round to round. If you look at Sam Briggs' performance, um, there is very little fluctuation between how long her rounds took, uh, and that's something that she's very good at, at doing as a more endurance-based athlete, is having a natural feel for that. And that's what we want to try and achieve in this workout. For your first attempt, it may be difficult to feel where that level needs to be for you. Uh, so you are going to need to, like, as you go through the workout, calibrate a little bit and, and decide on your pace. But if you can go into it with a rough plan based on what you think you're capable of getting score-wise, then uh, that can help out a lot. So with that in mind, if you're trying to get uh, you know, let's say ballpark numbers here. Uh, from looking at it, it looks like 13 plus rounds is like a, you know, best in the world type uh, score. Then that kind of person, if you're up, up with those kind of people, you need to be doing like a 132 round. 140 rounds will get you 12 total rounds, and I think a lot of you guys who see this video, um, like if you're shooting for spots at regionals and that kind of thing, need to be thinking around about. Um, that kind of pace, maybe a little bit slower. Uh, and then working back from there, 149 will give you, per round will give you 11 total rounds. Uh, if you're looking at contending in terms of maybe being on a team for regionals or something like that, I think you need to be getting at least something like 11 plus rounds, so that might be a good pace for you to try and shoot for. Uh, and then obviously um, 10 rounds, you're gonna to need to do two minute rounds. So. Uh, what I recommend you guys do, I'm going to talk about our warm up, but basically at the end of our warm up, you're going to do two to three rounds, ideally three rounds of the actual workout at the pace that you think you can probably shoot for when you actually do 18.1. And then from there, based on how that feels when you finish it, those three rounds, you might think, well, actually, that 140 pace was a bit hard. I'm going to try and hold a 145 pace per round or a 149 pace. Um, and then you can make those notes next to your judging sheet for your judge to keep you on track. Uh, so I'm going to be suggesting that you have like a pre-planned cutoff times for your rounds all written out based on the pace that you think is ballpark what you should be aiming for. Uh, you can then during the workout, you know, decide if, if, you know, you get to the 13, 14 minute mark and you think you can be a little bit faster, a little bit slower than that pace, you can always make that call. But it does help you to kind of keep on track as you go through the workout and gives you that feedback as to whether you can rest a little bit more and you can push a bit harder. So that's pacing. Uh, another limiting factor in this workout, apart from just the general aerobic feel of it, will be uh, the grip and the upper body fatigue for some people. So the combination of pulling on the rower, the toaster bar and the dumbbells, uh, there's a fair bit of grip work there, bicep work in there as well. Uh, so managing that by using our hips as much as possible in the clean and in the in the push press, uh, and then also uh, not having a death grip on the bar when we're doing our toaster bar and our rowing, trying to keep it as much as possible a relaxed grip there, using our lower body for those movements as much as possible, particularly on the rowing, and not, not being too uptight in the upper body. Uh, and then my last point here before I move on to the next whiteboard is the more advanced you are of an athlete, the more the important the row is in this workout. Okay, so uh, the more advanced you get, the more likely it is you can definitely do unbroken reps and pretty fast reps on the toaster bar and on the dumbbell. And then it comes down to uh, how quickly you can do that row and you need to know, know what pace you can sustain throughout the whole 20 minutes. Okay, so talking in each of the movements in a little bit more detail now. First of all, with the toaster bar, uh, a lot of people, it's going to be fine to go unbroken all the way through. If you're aiming to get anywhere above like 11 and a half, 11 and 11 rounds, you've probably got to go unbroken on the toaster bar most of the way through. Um, although, breaking up into four and four will be able to alleviate the grip a little bit for some people, which could be, which could be a pretty big factor. So that's something to consider there. Um, the dumbbells, practice them lots before you start. It's going to be a fairly new movement for most of us, uh, and which means you can get some really good little efficiency gains just in a short amount of time by just practicing some nice fluid reps beforehand. So definitely do a good comprehensive warm-up and quite a few reps of 
nice smooth technique with that as well. Um, it's definitely worth having you judge and look at your technique as well just to make sure that you're changing hands below the eye level uh, and all that kind of stuff. Never, don't forget also to stand that deadlift up before you go into that first hang rep. Use the hips, the upper body and the grip will become fatigued so really try to make, um, try to use as little bicep as possible in this movement uh, and make it more about the hip drive in the clean and then also the overhead component. Which brings me to my next point. A muscle clean push press is probably going to be uh, a pretty reasonable way to go with this, with this weight. It's pretty light and if you're using your leg drive well, it can be pretty effective, less time on attention. Um, a slight dip to receive it and then also to uh, re-dip under to do a jer more jerk style is also okay. Um, but I think a lot of the, the better athletes will be muscle clean and push pressing. Uh, and then think about hook grip as an option as well, especially if your dumbbells aren't particularly thick in the, in the handle. Getting that hook grip in there might be able to just save your grip a little bit more. With the roller, because the rest of the stuff is a bit more upper body focused, really try and use your legs as much as possible and your hips in the rowing, trying to generate power from there rather than pulling uh, too aggressively with the upper body. And then a smooth transition onto the rower and getting your foot in the straps is going to be really important. So you can you can still get a pretty good score. Like I saw someone today get like a really, really high score and still strap their feet in and out every round. But it is psychologically sometimes a little bit harder, a little bit more fiddly to do that. Um, you can also just take that stress out of it and just have the straps at a, at a slightly loose setting so you can get in and out without having to adjust them with your hands all the way through the workout. I think either of those would work well as long as uh, it's not becoming a chore in the workout to strap them up and as long as it's not slowing you down too much in between transitions because um, transition time is going to be quite important if you're looking to get anything more than like 11 rounds, something like that. Before we even get into the movement, the general part of the warm up, uh, really important, double check the movement standards, read the whole workout description and know all the little details about the workout. Uh, it's worth doing your homework because we don't want to have to redo this workout unnecessarily because we've overlooked something. Uh, and then set up your equipment, your layout, uh, make sure the equipment's all close together, have your camera and video organised and speak to the person who's going to be judging you and also someone who's going to be potentially filming you or keeping you, or keeping you on track. Just so all that's organised before you start, because there's no one to be warming up and then having to go and find a judge and organise all that stuff uh, and then cool them down, you know, taking 15 minutes to get that organised. So do that first and then you just got to do your warm up and, and then get ready to go. So with our warm up, general portion of the warm up is just going to be a five minute easy row and then building intensity as we go, increasing intensity and finishing with, a, with a, at least that last minute at or above the pace that we're going to be doing in the workout. Then we go into our specific warm up, there's two parts to it. The first part we're just getting the uh, muscle groups working that we're going to be using the workout and then we're actually practicing some rounds of the workout. So to start with two rounds, the first round we do 15 scat pull ups with straight arms hanging from the pull up bar, 10 single arm RDLs with the dumbbell and then five single arm strip press with a light dumbbell. The next round through those scat pull-ups are going to turn into kip swings, so 15 kip swings. Then uh, same movements here, but just a little bit heavier getting up towards the weight that we're going to do in the mod with these presses and RDLs. Then we're moving on to uh, the more specific part of the warm-up where we're doing one full round of the workout and just getting a feel for your transitions uh, and your pacing of, of those movements and the flow of those movements. Once you've, once you've done one full round of that, have a rest and then we're going to then do two to three rounds. I'm actually probably recommending three is best. Time those three rounds at the pace that you think you might hit the workout at. And then at the end of those three rounds, look at that time that it's taken, evaluate how you're feeling, and ask yourself whether you think you can maintain that for another uh, 15 minutes or whatever it is um, pace-wise. And if the answer is maybe not, then potentially try and um, plan on a slightly slower pace, at least to start with in the workout so that you don't bite off more than you can chew early on. So that's really important, that, that three round test there. Uh, by the end of those, those warm up rounds, you should have done, you've done quite a few reps with the, uh, with the dumbbell there, and you're pretty familiar with that movement, um, but it wouldn't hurt for you to, if you feel like you need to do a little bit more with that dumbbell to get really accustomed to that new movement standard, then um, it's probably worth doing that as well. Once this specific part of the warm up's finished, say 10 minutes after that, that's when you want to start the workout. 
Okay, so last thing to talk about is just our cool down and then our training session for immediately after 18.1. Um, this will also depend on what kind of training volume you're used to and how much time you have, but we do suggest doing at least a little bit of strength maintenance work on the day of the open workouts all the way through. So first thing you're going to do after the workout, once you've recovered a little bit, is go head out on a 400 meter walk. Nice, easy box breathing protocol, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four seconds. Uh, and then during the course of that 400 meters, just focus on that breathing and calming down a little bit. When you come back into the gym, some wrist flow uh, and some stretching out of the forearms just to alleviate some of the tension that has been built up in that workout with all the grip work. Once, once that's been done and you've had a decent enough rest, maybe some post-workout, um, the carbohydrates, the protein, that kind of thing, then you can get into this training session. The main thing we want from this training session is strength maintenance with these front squats and these um, strict muscle ups. So that would be the main part. And then depending on how much training and volume you're used to, you can probably do these other parts as well. Um, but just talking through the whole session, it would be power snatches, four sets of three in a moderate weight, front squats, five by five, at moderate to heavy, an EMON every 10 minutes, one to four strict muscle ups. Uh, if you don't have strict muscle up, you could work strict pull up, strict dip, something like that instead, that'd be fine. And then some back rack walking lunges, three sets of 10 at a moderate weight, and a little aim on here, just more for skills maintenance and to keep some uh, leg power, leg endurance. We've got some um, 70 double lunges on one minute, the next minute 10 wing rows, the next minute 40 second moderate um, weight prowler effort, fast prowler effort, and then on the fourth minute we rest, we're just gonna go through that three times, just a little bit of a top up for some of our skills and conditioning. Um, but yeah, that, that would be a full training day, obviously, with 18.1, um, but the more important part's been this one.